The other point that I really want to stress to all of you, and this is something that con concerns me very deeply, and again, I have to go back to the Rome analogy. If you look at Rome, and if, I, if you were living in Rome, let's say, 350 AD, Rome, again, like America today, was at the height of its power. Its empire was never bigger. Its military was never bigger. It was feared by everybody in the world. If you said to a Roman senator or a Roman leader that within a hundred years the Roman Empire would disintegrate like dust in the wind, they would laugh at you. They'd say, you're insane. If they had a mental asylum at that time, they'd throw you into the mental asylum. The point is your greatness depends ultimately on your moral principles. And Rome was powerful on the outside, but it was hollow and weak on the inside. And my big concern is that with the rise of our celebrity culture, with the revolution of the 1960s, celebration of drugs, of sex, of the breakdown of the family, of everybody doing their own thing, as they said in the 60s, we are being sapped of our moral and spiritual foundational principles that made this country great. And so, one of the things that I find most disturbing in the news business has been the rise of this celebrity culture. And so just as a little experiment, I had some of my reporters look into what around the world, when people go on the internet and they sort of, you know, type in the sort of, which kind of people do they type in? Who is the most famous person? Which people on the, which figures on the internet do children like to look up to or read about? Is it George Bush? Is it Hillary Clinton? Is it Barack Obama? Is it even Barry Bonds or Tom Brady? No. Number one is Britney Spears. And number two, right close second, is Paris Hilton. This is our face to the world. One, a Britney Spears, literally a woman with very limited talent who made millions of dollars flashing her belly button and doing her thing on stage, who literally, through drug use, promiscuity, an absolutely disastrous personal life, literally has driven herself into a mental asylum. And the other one, Paris Hilton, is practically drunk and stoned all day. She even brags about it. She does videos smoking up. And this is what's going around the entire world. This, this is our face to the world. This is our most uh, popular cultural export around the world. And I can tell you right now in the newsroom, there's something called the Britney Watch or the Britney Alert. Anything involving Britney Spears has to be put into the newspaper. You know, Fox News, CNN, whatever. They're Britney Spears. Britney Spears got out of the asylum. She's back in the asylum. Britney Spears is sleeping with this guy. She's sleeping with that guy. She got pregnant by this guy. She got pregnant by that guy. It's all over the place. You know, I remember, I knew something was very wrong with our culture. When, I don't know if you remember this, when Paris Hilton, you remember she got caught for drunk driving and she had to go to prison and mommy, please don't let me go in prison and there was this whole incident. I did not, God as my witness, I did not read a word of any story about Paris Hilton. I knew everything there was about the case. It was incredible. I was, like, I was telling this to, to Jonathan and to, and to Robert, my publisher. I said, Robert, I don't understand what's going on here. I'm trying not to read about this junk. And I know everything there is to know about this case. It's incredible. You know, and, you know, so there's that aspect, this sort of glorification of entertainment. And it's what I think Pope Benedict, um, the Pope, I think has brilliantly put out, when he wrote in his encyclical, what the West is now facing is the entertainmentization and infantilization of our society. We are a society literally obsessed with entertainment, with self-gratification, with literally games. I mean, I can't go to a, a restaurant anymore. The TVs are everywhere. It's, it's like wall-to-wall -wall TVs, sports, movies. We can't get enough of it. It's just everywhere. So what's slow, you know, to me, teenagers, I don't know if any of you have teenagers, but teenagers, all they think about is, you know, going out, going to a movie, having friends, doing, they're, they're obsessed with entertainment. Adults are not. We understand, or we should understand, that there is much more to life than just simple pleasure and simply entertaining ourselves. 
And we as a country, I believe, are slowly forgetting that. And as we try to spread this around the world, what many people are saying is, no, we don't want it. And so I'm sort of running overboard here on time. So let me just, I just want to end with saying this. To me, although I am a Canadian citizen, I'm in the process of becoming an American, why did I come to America? Let me be very honest with all of you. My parents fled communist Eastern Europe. My grandfather was persecuted first by the Nazis and then by the communists. I remember, I'll never forget my grandfather telling me, when 1945, when there was VE Day in Europe, when the West and the United States and Canada were celebrating a magnificent victory over fascist forces, we in Eastern Europe were mourning. We saw the Soviet tanks coming in, and they were spreading atheism and totalitarianism, and they were ramming it down our throats. And my grandfather said, I remember, they went village to village to village. They murdered priests, they murdered nuns, they murdered intellectuals. If you held land, they murdered you because they wanted to confiscate your property. My grandfather, I'll never forget this, always told me this story. When they came to round us up to put us in a concentration camp, he still remembers taking my father, who was two years old, and his younger, um, his younger brother, who was one years old, putting him over a barbed wire fence as they were rounding him in. And this woman, God bless her, took my father and his younger brother, and she hid him in a cellar. And she took care of him for three years until my, until my grandparents got out. When we came to the new world, we knew why we came here. This is the greatest civilization in the history of the world. It has been so good to my family, and it has been so good to me. To me, America is and always should be a city on a hill. And my challenge to all of you is the challenge that I make to myself. We have to say clearly and unequivocally that for us to remain a great country, we have to remain a great culture, and we have to remain a great people in our character and in our moral values. We have to say clearly and unequivocally, killing 50 million unborn children, innocent children, is wrong. We have to say that pornography degrades our women. We have to say that the family is breaking down and it must stop. We have to take care of the weakest and the most vulnerable among us, especially the elderly, not with this euthanasia and, uh, and sanctioning murder of older people because somehow we don't want them. In other words, we have to stand up for the culture of life. And that is why everyone here, from whatever religious faith you come from, we all share many key principles and values. If we stay together, I am convinced that we will win. The future is ours. God bless you and God bless America.